okay the neck more importantly um, you know you got to give it some love maybe not the expensive kind of love but you got to give it some love okay hi guys welcome uh, for those of you who don't know me my name is Nancy I am a beauty advisor at Sephora and uh, today's video will be kind of me sharing what I have seen um, after working at Sephora for a couple of years uh, what the things that I have seen mature women not address or that they're not doing when it comes to their skincare. Now, I need to um, preface this by saying I am not a licensed esthetician, I am not a dermatologist, and the most important thing is uh, Sephora has nothing to do with this video. These are simply my opinions, uh, my uh, experience with the products that I will be talking about in a little bit, the products that I have used or that I have some thoughts on. So this is not a video that's sponsored by anyone. Do your own research from your own opinions. This is just my experience and I'm just simply sharing it with you. And the way uh, we're going to do this is I'm going to just talk about the, the one thing, the problem or whatever the thing is that I've observed and that I think is important. And then I will give you uh, some examples of the products that I either am using right now or that I have used. Um, a lot of these I dug up from my empty bin, which if you haven't seen, I made a short about that, uh, about all the empties. I keep them all in a bin and it's a huge bin. So some of these took me a while to d dig up, but I wanted to, to you know mention them and I wanted to show you the bottle as well because I know it's easier when you can visually you can remember uh, things but I will also list everything down in the description box to make it um, if you want to refer to it you can just go to the description box and the, the names will be there as well so I think we got everything out of the way so let's get started pulling out my iPad here because I don't want to forget anything and I I tend to just uh, go like scatterbrain and anyway like I was doing just now okay the first item is cleansing not understanding how important this step is uh, because if you're not able to remove all of the the germs and all the, the the dirt that we accumulate throughout the day especially cleansing at night not so much in the morning in the morning it's not that important obviously but at night if you wear makeup you have sunscreen you have you know mascara you have all these things that you want to remove for your skin a lot of the times double cleansing is essential now if you are someone who wears like very light makeup just like a little bit of something here and there cleansing once is is good enough but the the type of cleanser that you select is important because we have cleansers that are just kind of meant to just clean the skin and then there are cleansers that are meant to clean the skin and remove makeup and so let me give you um let me give you an example of what those are and why i love them uh let me grab my basket over there okay and now i'll, I'll go in the order of um my favorite to least favorite so these are cleansers that you can use them as double cleanser these are cleansers that are amazing for a mature skin because they don't strip or dry the skin so they remove makeup like in an amazing way but they also won't dry it out so the first one which i've talked about many times if you've watched any of my videos having to do with skincare i will not shut up about this this is the philosophy cleanser it's um it's meant to, to be hydrating it uses um what is the oil i wrote it down i'll write it on the screen anyway i have been using and loving this for years and unfortunately sephora does not carry this but it is a beautiful cleanser um, if you are a light makeup wearer one wash with this will do the trick if you are a heavy makeup wearer you can do a double cleanse with this so you can do it uh, apply it rinse it off then go in a second time and all the makeup will be removed my second favorite is this one from skin fix and this is good news for those of you that have sensitive skin this blue line from skin fix i believe their entire brand is targeted for sensitive skin this one is based with coconut oil um, it has no fragrance none other products um, have fragrance so for those of you who uh, just want want no fragrance or have sensitive skin this is fabulous it works just as well as the philosophy I like the philosophy a little bit more just because I'm all about you know scents and for me the smell on the philosophy is like uh, what heaven must smell like 
this thing smells like it, like you're in a spa and you're just being pampered. This doesn't have a bad fragrance, has no fragrance at all, but it does just the same job. It melts your makeup without stripping, leaves your skin nice and hydrated. And a third one, which I love as well, again, does the same thing, double duty, removes makeup and leaves your skin nice and clean, is this one from Youth to the People. This one I love, this one has an amazing scent, just also very therapeutic for me. Um, I don't use it as much because I feel like this one may be a little bit less hydrating than the other two that I just spoke about. So if you have normal to oily skin, I would recommend this one. Um, not that those two are going to leave your skin oily or anything, but this one I think would be more appropriate if you have normal to oily skin. An amazing product that also melts your mascara, melts everything, and it does not strip your skin. You've probably heard about these balms that are like used as a first step in cleansers, and here's an example. This is Clinique, and I just got this one recently um, in gratis. This one's from Elemis. So these are balms. And the way, is you, the way you use them is you go in, apply them on dry skin, and then start adding a little bit of water slowly and then massage it in. And what that does is starts lifting the makeup. Um, then you would go in with like either um, a small towel, or I forget what those are called, or you can go rinse it off. Now, do I like these? No. I have them. I use them here and there. I don't like them because they just don't, they don't become, they don't have enough oil in my, it has been in my experience. It just doesn't do it for me. They turn to, uh, they tend to turn like white, like when I start massaging and I just, it's just more work. I feel like it's more work. This one in particular also has a very strong scent. Um, this one doesn't really have a strong scent. So if you happen to um, enjoy these, um, I would say, you know, if you mind scents, then um, don't go for this one. I just think it creates more work for you um, because when you don't use a little towel to remove it and you just go in with water, it's kind of hard to remove. So I'm all about making it as simple as possible. I forgot to mention that a great option to do step one cleansing is this um, oil from Biosance. This is a beautiful cleansing oil. So instead of using something like this, I prefer using something like this and this product is amazing I've gone through so many bottles of this I would never get tired of buying it if you have oily skin do not be afraid of using a cleansing oil it's not going to make your skin oilier this is a fabulous product um, okay what else did I have to say about cleansing so how important it is because if your your skin is not clean obviously your your treatments your serums are not going to be able to absorb properly um, because if there's debris, not debris, that's dramatic, but um, you know what I mean. If there's gunk and dirt sitting there, how are your products supposed to absorb and how are you supposed to, your skin supposed to get the most benefit, right? Um, and that is going to bring me to my next point. Next point is exfoliation. Um, a lot of people don't exfoliate. Um, they believe that it's going to be harsh, that it's going to you know, make their skin break out or, or um, make their skin sensitive. And, and and let me let me just back up by saying there's two types of exfoliation. There's physical exfoliation and there's chemical exfoliation. Let me give you some examples. Physical exfoliators would be these types. I have this one uh, from Tata Harper, which I was gifted and gratis. I, it, the, this brand is very luxe, so their prices are a little bit expensive. Anyway, um, this is um, one that I've used, and this one from uh, Wishful. I've, this is my second bottle. I like this one. And the reason why I use these, like maybe once a week, no more than twice a week ever, at least for me, because I have very dry skin, is these are very mild. They're very thin. It's not like these um, like scrubs that you see where, where the you can see the grain, it's like really big and thick and you go in and you, go, you feel like you're gonna tear your skin. Well, the, these don't do that. These are very mild. Just m massage it in. Don't put too much pressure because I I don't know if it's a lefty hand type thing, but I'm, I'm very rough. So I'm mindful to kind of just massage it without like going in too much. And you can do that once or twice a week if you choose to do you know, physical exfoliation. 
if you want chemical exfoliation, that's where AHAs and BHAs come in. And I have two examples here, um, two from Paula's Choice and one from another brand that I just want to show you. Um, where have they gone? Oh, one second. So for chemical exfoliation, like I was saying, these two from Paula's Choice are good options. This one I feel like a lot of people are very familiar with. This is a 2% BHA liquid exfoliant and it's salicylic acid. Um, salicylic acid is a form of BHA. You use this, you know, before you moisturize or after you cleanse, um, it leaves it ultimately over time and makes your skin super smooth. It does what exfoliants are supposed to do. They recently also came out with this one and this one is an AHA. So this one has 6% mandelic acid and 2% lactic acid. This one is meant to be even milder than this one, I believe. However, this one has a scent that I don't like. So I got it in gratis and I just I forget about using it because uh, I don't like that scent. Um, this one has like a pleasant mild scent. So if these are two options that you have um, from uh, Paula's Choice. There's a third one that I have that I also had received. Um, I didn't buy this myself, so I, I don't know that I would. Um, I've tried it. It's from Lion Pose. And this one to me is pretty aggressive. So I feel like if you're not used to using chemical exfoliants, that this would not be a good one to start with. I look at that and I think of people with like oily skin, with a lot of texture, with a lot of like enlarged pores. But this is something I, I would say, you know, you have to ease into it. Um, not something you can certainly not use every day, but um, it, it could be a good option if you're if this is what your skin needs. But if you wanted to start off, that's my opinion. This is again, remember, not Sephora, not anyone else. No one is sponsoring any of this. These are just products that I use. And keep in mind, before I started working at Sephora, I was already like a makeup and skincare psycho. Like I, I had started my collection way before I started working at Sephora. And so now being there a couple of years, you know, you get a ton, you get products. So I get the opportunity to try so many things that, you know, I, this is why I can share and talk about these products with you because I have access to a lot of products that the average consumer wouldn't, right? So I just wanted to remind you this again, not Sephora, this is personal opinions and take it with a grain of salt, do your own research, but this is my experience. Keeping in mind that I am 58 and I have dry skin. Okay, so we've covered, we've covered then exfoliation. And remember, your makeup can only look as good as how you prep the skin. If you put full coverage foundation on, on dry, flaky skin, how is that foundation supposed to look good? You know, if you don't exfoliate, that's what happens. The dead skin is going to sit there. It's going to keep layering and layering, which is going to cause your, your foundation to break, to look cakey. So exfoliation, huge, 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 huge. If you are new to exfoliation, I would say, you know, start off with a chemical one, maybe this one, um, like, three times a week, two times a week, and then build yourself up, you know. My personal routine is I, do, I alternate. Like one night I'll do retinol, and then the next night I'll do exfoliation. So just kind of keeping a balance. So I think that covers all the points I had. Let me see. As far as exfoliation and how a lot of people that I've seen, a lot of clients think it's something that, you know, it's really not important, it's not a big deal. Um, but I, that's why I wanted to point it out. So now my next one is hydration. You don't need to have dry skin to consider hydration to be important. Um, hydration is, especially as we get older, our skin naturally tends to get drier as we get older. Along with if we are using retinol, retinol tends to dry out the skin even more. Therefore, hydration is super, super important. Um, and for people like me who have dry skin, to begin with, hydration becomes even more important. So for me, I always use a, a toner that is a hydrating toner. My holy grail, and I've brought this up before, if you've seen this, I'm sorry I'm being repetitive, but when you love a product, you love a product, and you know how that is. So, my number one toner from Lancome. I've been using this baby for years, and 
the only other one that came close to this one is the one from Laneige. They have a hydrating toner. I couldn't find the empties, but I did go through two of those bottles. It's not as milky and as creamy and as hydrating as this one, but it does it does a good job. So that is a good alternative to to this one as far as a hydrating toner goes. The one from Laneige. Going back to uh, you know, I see my clients don't realize how important hydration is, and to try and incorporate it throughout every step. So for me, it starts off with using, you know, a hydrating cleanser, a cleanser that won't strip my skin, followed by a toner that is also going to be adding hydration to my skin. And another step is using an essence, which I get it. A lot of people want a simple skincare routine. They don't believe in essences. I happen to believe in essences incredibly um, because I, I don't go to... Um, I don't go to a dermatologist, I don't get treatments, I don't get all this fancy expensive stuff that women get done. I just rely on my own skincare regimen at home. And this may not be you, maybe you just get everything done and that's great. Um, this video is addressed to those of you who, who want to do a little bit more for your skin and don't really maybe know how or, or what steps or what products to implement. It's, it's a dress, sorry I'm sitting on my bed and I'm sliding off. <laughs> Um, yeah, so it's addressed to, to you for, for that type of client who really wants to do a little bit more, take care of the skin a little bit more, maybe start now. Um, maybe you didn't do that in your 30s, 40s, 50s, and, and you're now finding that you want to do more. So that's for you. So <laughs> take notes. I'm kidding. Um, so essences, going back to essences. See how I ramble on? That's why I need to write the notes. So backing up, this is so you wash your skin, you pat it dry, you apply your toner, and then you go in with um, an essence or a hyaluronic acid serum. Very, very important when you're applying a hyaluronic acid serum, for example, if you're using the one from The Ordinary, super important that you apply it on damp skin. If you apply it on dry skin, it's going to do the opposite. It's going to draw the moisture instead of from the environment i believe what it does is it, it it tries to draw it from your skin causing your skin to be even drier and that may not be the correct explanation but it is ultimately what it does <laughs> and you can look that up and let me know in the comments down below even better it gives you a reason to write a comment for me so which helps the algorithm which, which helps my channel so it might be good to be wrong sometimes and have you guys you know help me out here um so yes yeah, so that can be considered sort of like something you would do for hydration. There's a couple that I that I want to talk to you about that I've used and, and have really enjoyed. One of my favorite products, and this is from the drugstore, is this Vichy Mineral 89. And if you are someone that's into skincare, you have heard about this. This thing has been so popular, it has won, I think, a ton of awards. It's, it's uh, I believe it's K-Beauty, I believe it is. Um, it provides you with so much hydration and a ton of other beautiful ingredients that are on there. I, I don't, I didn't do much research on it. I just know it's amazing and I've used several bottles. Um, and what I do is I, <laughs> I buy this at uh, CVS. So whenever I'm, I run out or I'm ready to buy another bottle, you know, save that coupon that we get in the mail, 25, 30% off, whatever you go in, you buy it and you end up saving money. This is a beautiful serum. It's super light on the skin. It's like, see, it's runny. It feels so nice. It absorbs into the skin and it makes your skin feel like plump and, and nice and juicy and hydrated. So that's Vichy Mineral. Another good one, which is also not sold at Sephora, is this one from Cosrx, um, Advanced Nail 96 Mucin Power Essence. I've also used this on and off for many years. I even got my daughter into using it and her skin is not even as dry as mine, but she loves it. Again, it, this one's a little bit thicker than, than the uh, Vichy. And this is an empty actually, I forgot, I finished it. Um, it's a little bit thicker, but it gives you the same, same beautiful hydration. Um, and they both work well on their makeup. They're not gonna affect your, <clears throat> your makeup. Another good one that I just finished is this one from Shani, Shani Darden, and it is, let me get my glasses, Shani Darden, Sh I don't know how to pronounce that, Shani Darden Moisture Boost Plumping Serum, Hydrate, Strengthen, Smooth. 
I just finished it. It's lovely. It was the first time I used it, but um, I was sad when it finished. I would totally recommend it. This line is a smaller, it's a smaller brand at Sephora, but it's it's getting, it's starting to grow. I've used some, several other products from them and um, their, their products are really good. So for hydration and plumpness, you could go in with this one. If I remember correctly, this one's also a little bit thicker, thicker than the Vichy. Um, so it works the same way. Um, so yes, this is another good alternative or just using a simple hyaluronic acid serum by itself, making sure that you apply it on, on damp skin, not dry skin. So that is hydration. The next uh, point I have is, I think I just touched on it briefly. I've seen women with oily skin really steer away from hydrating products. And I just wanted to mention it because it's, it, you need hydration. Oily skin can still be dehydrated dry skin is, needs hydration plus moisture and and what i see is a lot of women with oily skin think that they can only use a moisturizer which is good you need to focus on on a moisturizer that's water-based um and most brands offer one that's like you know you'll see the water aqua in it um versus like the more moisture one which is for dry skin a good example of that is tatcha the purple one is of for dry skin and the green bottle is for for normal to oily so not only is it important to just select the correct moisturizer one that's you know not going to create more oil on the surface of your skin but you also need to remember that hydration is just as important um, because what happens is if you don't hydrate the skin enough this is what i've heard from from, from a dermatologist is that the skin it triggers the, the the body into thinking that it needs to make up for that lack of hydration and therefore it produces more oil so you're actually causing the opposite effect by avoiding you know things like serums and, and things that are hydrating for your skin um, so I just wanted to point that out don't be afraid of using um, what your skin needs just because you think it's going to produce more oil because it may actually cause the opposite effect and also if you have oily skin it's important to have niacinamide into into your skincare routine because niacinamide helps control the excess oil on the surface of the skin but it's also important to incorporate a BHA because that helps control the the production of oils in a deeper layer in the deeper layers of the skin so with a combination of those two into your skincare regimen you can control the production the excess production of it right so the bha is going to act on a deeper layer to help minimize the production of it then the niacinamide is going to help the surface of the skin to help reduce the excess oil on the surface, on the surface level. I hope that made sense. That's my, my two cents on oily skin. Um, my next point is um, not using vitamin C. I think that mature skin, we need a lot of things as we get older. Our skin, you know, if you're in my age or older in my age range, I'm 58, you know what I mean. Our skin changes, things just really go downhill, like, like, literal and physically is that my nose is so itchy what is going on so vitamin c um helps protect the skin it's vitamin let me back up vitamin c is a great antioxidant and it helps protect your skin from the environmental aggressors so that's number one it's also it helps brighten and help uh, uneven skin tone which we get as we get older um because of all that lack of using sunscreen that we did in our 20s and 30s starts to show up now. And it's that's when we get the uh, hyperpigmentation, we get the age spots. That's all uh, things that maybe you didn't struggle with in your 20s and 30s and that kind of starts to be an issue. So vitamin C is, is important. It also helps your sunscreen be more effective. Combination of two, um, it just it helps the efficacy of your sunscreen. So that's that's just um, awesome, right? That's even another reason to encourage you to use um, vitamin C. So you use vitamin C the same way. You wash your, your face, you tone, 
and then this this requires I think a whole separate video um, just kind of going over the order of the steps and how how they should be incorporated because I know I'm throwing a lot of things at you and maybe some of you are not too sure as to like what goes first so that's a whole other video but just I'll give it to you like really quickly and just in it in really quickly because I'm rambling on and I have and I'm get to have to work actually in a few hours so you cleanse you tone then you apply your treatments which are your serums and it can you can use up as many as you need just make sure you allow some time in between each one for the skin to absorb it especially if you're using retinol if you apply retinol at night which should always be at night uh, FYI vitamin C tech typically is recommended in the morning because you you kind of put this layer of protection on your skin before you head out the door and retinol is at night where you are sleeping and your cells are regenerating and you're absorbing all that goodness and that's where retinol gets to kind of work in besides you it's not recommended that you use retinol in the morning because the sun uh, can have an adverse effect on your skin and it may creates more sensitivity creates a bunch of issues so anyway vitamin C in the morning retinol at night after your treatments then you go in with your moisturizer so your nice moisturize all over and then if it's the morning time then you go in with your sunscreen right and that's the end of your skincare then you move on to your makeup and then you would if you have a primer that you use for makeup you, you use your primer then your foundation and etc etc um, if it's nighttime same thing wash tone treat with a bunch of serums whatever you need retinol whatever it is that you're using um, moisturize and if you want to implement an oil this is when you would use an oil after your moisturizer because the oil will then come in and sort of like seal everything and it's going to help boost the hydration and it helps your the products that you applied kind of like really stay in place and and, and really get them absorbed they're locked in so I like oils there's I'm very picky about my oils um, I have found the one from Biosense to be one of the ones I like and also this one let me show you this one from pharmacy I, I use from time to time I don't use oil every single night um, it's not for everyone. you know it's it's some people just hate feeling that stickiness on their skin I, I love skincare so I'm just like you know just bring it I love putting stuff on my face but anyway I digress so vitamin C so I mentioned the the pros right now we get to my vitamin C recommendations or products that I've used that I can talk to you about the first one is uh, youth to the people it has peptides plus vitamin C energy concentrate now I only found the eye version of this this is for the eyes but the bottle there's a bigger bottle that looks just like this I couldn't find it on my empties because it must be all the way at the bottom but anyway the bottle looks just like this it has the same type of ingredients and it's vitamin C love this stuff love 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 and the fact that they have a little mini version for the eyes is just phenomenal I've, I've used them both over the years and uh, this one I use in the morning because it has the vitamin C another good one is CEO uh, from Sunday Riley I'm sure some of you are very familiar with this a bit on the pricey side but a beautiful one I think this one has 15% vitamin C and you see has sorry has my name on there because this uh, I got in gratis from Sephora so this one can be a, a bit pricey but you know I, I I say wait for the sale the VIB sale and you know get yourself a nice discount if you want an affordable version this is a beautiful one from in beauty this is another smaller brand that's kind of starting to grow at Sephora it's called uh, green machine uh, and it has a bunch of had like 15 different super greens and it has vitamin C this is a really really nice one I've already uh, gone through a full bottle this is a new one that I just got recently so you see it's super it's green and you blend it in and it not only gives you the vitamin C and all those good antioxidants but it also hydrates the skin so it leaves your skin oh my god super I forgot how good this was so a beautiful beautiful affordable option 
is that one. From Paula's Choice, you can always choose this one. This one has 25% vitamin C and glutathione clinical serum. I don't know how to pronounce that word, but here it is. This one has a higher percentage of vitamin C. The others, the, I think the standard is 15%. This one has 25. I finished the bottle. I remember it to be, it, it was much thicker. So it certainly doesn't have the consistency of this. Um, this one was thicker. It felt more like a, like a moisturizer. Oh, but uh, the next one, I forget which number we're at. Applying products only on your face, forgetting about the neck and the decollete. Girls, let's get with the program. Do you know that a tell, what is it, a tell, tell? Something that gives away your age is how your neck looks. That is a giveaway. So your face can be nice and plump and firm and you have this, you know, your shriveling neck. What are we, it makes it actually worse because it doesn't match. So super important what you put in your face, bring it down your neck. Same, I even do this with foundation. If my foundation is not 100% exactly, and even if it is, I just have this habit of bringing it down my neck because I want everything to be even. Same with your skincare, more, more so with your skincare. Forget the, forget the foundation, who cares? But when it comes to skincare, you, you want those ingredients, the same ingredients. And I get it, some of these are very expensive and, and at least that has been my thought in the past. It's like, well, the serum costs like 80 bucks, I don't wanna waste it on my neck. Then what I recommend is find an affordable option, version of it, as close as you can, as best as you can. Um, for example, buy things from the Inky List or things from, um, from the ordinary, which sometimes I have, I don't know, weird feelings about the ordinary. I just heard the other day from a rep, and this is between you and I, that the ordinary initially was meant to just be sort of like to source skincare companies. So you know how the ordinary is a single ingredient, right? Every bottle is just a, an ingredient. And so I've always you know said to my clients use the ordinary not as your main you can't use it as your main form of routine it is meant to you go in oh you need vitamin c okay let me grab a vitamin c to incorporate with my already very well-rounded skincare routine it was meant to be sold to two companies so that they can formulate their products and then but then now they made it available to us customers consumers that are not skincare specialists. So you, you see what, what I mean? And a good example of that is, um, I, going back to the same thing, I was you know using retinol on my face, very expensive retinol. I didn't want to, you know, I would finish the bottle really quickly if I kept bringing it down. Um, so I said, let me use a retinol from the Inky list. And what happened was, and I tried this multiple times on, you know, I gave it like a couple months in between, tried it again. My skin broke out every single time on my neck. It, it didn't affect my face, but my neck couldn't handle that really raw, you know, retinol. So that's just an example. Um, so what I recommend is maybe, you know, get, get an affordable version, but maybe mix it in with something like that, uh, a humectant, something that's gonna make that product not so harsh, right? And that's a way you can go about it and that way be able to treat, treat your, your neck and your decollete, the neck more importantly. Um, you know, you gotta give it some love. Maybe not the expensive kind of love, but you gotta give it some love, okay? So that's, that's my two cents on that. And that was uh, my personal experience with, um, with how I go about that. Uh, the next one, um, pretty much saying the same thing, um, using only moisturizer. I see so many clients that think that, uh, yeah, I wash my face sometimes or with Dove and I put on moisturizer and they consider that to just be it. And, th and there's nothing wrong with, with, if that's what you wanna do with your skin, fine. But like I said, this video is addressed to those of you that wanna do a little more and want to kind of have some idea of how to get started or, or, or what to do, what the steps are. So this is meant for you. For someone who's getting older, who's starting to see the signs of aging and you want to do more. You, those are the basic things um, that like I've kind of gone over. Um, minus I, I haven't gotten to the retinol yet, but that's my next step. Maybe I should have talked about this one afterwards, but that's okay. You guys get the gist of it. 
um, washing and putting a moisturizer is just not enough. All, all it's doing is keeping your skin a little bit moisturized. But if you're not using exfoliants, if you're not using vitamin C, if you're not using retinol, it, these are treatments for your skin. So if you're not actively using those things, then your skin, you, you're not treating it. You're not addressing the, the aging, the, the, the lack of uh, plumpness, the, the fine lines and wrinkles. You're not addressing it with just simply washing and moisturizing your face. So I hope that made sense. I rambled on a little bit. So on that note, I wanted to just talk about some of the products, um, retinol products that, that I have used and then, you know, I have some thoughts on. The first one is from Sunday Riley A+. Plus. It's, it says it's a high dose retinol. This one, again, it's from Sunday Riley, so it's a bit pricey. I've gone through several bottles of this and I love it. Um, this is an empty one, so nothing's gonna come out, but it's like a yellow serum. It's really, really luxurious, feel amazing on the skin. I never found that it made my skin sensitive or it broke me out or, or caused redness or anything like that. That doesn't mean that it's not gonna happen for you. Everyone's different, every, every skin type is different. Um, and what works for me may not work for you, but this is just general, just so that you have some idea of what products are available, what is out there. So Sunday Riley is one. Uh, this, uh, another one is from Murad, uh, Youth Retinol, what is it called? Resurgence Retinol Youth is the name. This brand I think has been around for a very long time, so it has a, like a, a solid like following there's some people that um, come in and they just you know all they want is Murad because they this is what they've used for years and years so these two are two good examples another example is this one from the name that I cannot pronounce Shani Shani Darden Shani Darden let me put my eyes on sorry Shani Darden retinol smooth fine lines firm and brighten so this is another option I don't know the percentage of the retinol in this one um, and it's also a very luxurious product um, even the packaging it, it's really nice and luxurious so retinol at night if you're trying to up your game with skincare retinol at night super important and these are three good options that I wanted to mention for you the next um, item the next point is this one I, I'm gonna try to kind of hold back a little bit because I have some thoughts about this but buying products I see this all the time clients come in buying products because they're trending on TikTok because they saw that it's popular all these commercials everyone's using it it's being sold out so you got to run to the store and get it before so it's buying products just because they're popular and not, be, not based on your skin needs. Please, ladies, please, let's buy. And, and another thing, that, which is the thing that I was, I said I was gonna hold back, but let me give you this example. <laughs> I had a client come in with like her 12 year old um, and there was an item on sale that was, um, that was 50% off and you know she was buying makeup but I, I wanted to mention the things that were on sale in case she was in need of that so I said you know this product is 50% off it's, it's a chemical exfoliant I think you benefit from it let me show you so I show her and then she grabs her daughter and she just says to her do you want this okay this is the problem you know how they keep talking about how 10 year olds are invading Sephora and it's become I see it and I am not going to expand on it too much because, you know, it's not my place and I, and I work there and I love my job and I don't want to get fired. <laughs> but this is, this is what I'm seeing. This is the, the sort of where we're headed, where we have these young girls buying products, anti-aging things that they don't need. The moms are not educated on it and they're buying these things for them. And it just blew my mind how she needed that. I saw her skin. She had a ton of fine lines and wrinkles. Like, I'm recommending this for you because you clearly are not, whatever. And the fact when she turned around and offered to buy for her daughter just because it was on sale and I had just told her it was an exfoliant, I mean, there's something wrong. So we need to, this madness of, of you know, we just run and buy whatever's popular. When it comes to skincare, we have to stop and think. Like this is something that 
has an active ingredient in it. These young girls, in their case, you know, it can have a, a really negative effect down the road when they're putting all these things on their skin that they don't need, that they don't know how it works, um, they don't know how to use it. And then, and then we have moms that are just kind of, you know, adding and just embracing and sitting back and letting it, I, I don't know, I just, I said I was gonna hold back, but this is, I, I, it's really, it's, it's an issue. Um, and I wish more people would be, would kind of be a little bit more, take a little bit more time to really kind of think about that. Um, I think the last one, and it, maybe it turned out to not be 10, I'm not sure, but the big one, and you know where I'm going with this, not using sunscreen. It's like the number one dermatologist, any dermatologist will tell you, the sun is the number one thing that adds to, to fine lines and wrinkles and the loss of firmness and the loss of elasticity. The sun causes real, real true damage. And now, let me take a sip of water, hold on. How do public speakers do it? If you've ever been to um, a Tony Robbins event, this man talks all day and he doesn't take a sip of water. I don't know, it, it's some magic. I don't know how he does it, but I'm here talking to you just a little bit and I, I'm like, my lips are like stuck together, I'm parched. I mean, which is a good thing because I am very bad at drinking water. Oh, that could be my last one. Yes, drinking enough water. Not just protecting your skin from the sun. So backing up, before we get into my dehydration here. So no, the sun is the number one cause for, for, for damage um, and for aging, premature aging. And it causes those dark spots that we mentioned and the hyperpigmentation and the uneven skin tone. So sunscreen, sunscreen, not just in the summer, girls, not just in the summer all year round, every morning. And if it's cloudy and raining, maybe that day I'll, I'll just skip it for one day. But overall, like religiously, sunscreen. Now, I grew up in, in a time where no one knew about SPF and we would go to the beach and we would pour baby oil on our skin. One time I fell asleep. I fell asleep for like three hours. I woke up and I was red as a lobster had to be taken to the doctor. I couldn't go to school for like a week because my skin couldn't even be touched. I call it painful and that was a wake up call. So back then, although my mother didn't offer sunscreen because she didn't know any better, I knew to, that baby oil and laying down in the sun was a big no, no. And maybe that is the cause why I have all these that, you know, this awful, like, I don't call it melasma, melasma, because it may not be, I have never been to a dermatologist and it's crazy that I'm sitting here talking to you about skincare and I've never been to a dermatologist, uh, but I'm a studied bitch. I love to read about skincare and I love trying products. I love learning about ingredients and I just love sharing it with you guys. So it's remember this, you're, I'm not a professional. I'm just your, your neighbor who just happens to love babbling about skincare and loves putting out all this shit on her face um so yes i know that a lot of this this damage that i have from the sun you know it comes from when i was a teenager in my 20s my third i didn't take good care i didn't protect my skin so if you're young and you're watching this just that is your number one thing this is what these little girls need when they go to sephora they just need maybe a moisture a moisturizing sunscreen that's all they need they don't need all this other stuff and I may get in trouble for saying that, but um, that is the number one thing you can do to prevent premature aging, sunscreen. And like the other thing, in case I didn't add up to number 10, this will be my 10th. Drink plenty of water. Say as I do, what is this? Do as I say, not as I do, but today I'm being good. I'm drinking water, so I'm good today. Hydration, hydration. Before we move on to the last uh, step, I was talking sunscreen. So I wanted to tell you about some products. My number one recommendation is this one from Dermatology. This actually is not sold to Sephora. Uh, it's Universal Tinted Moisturizer SPF 46. This is a beautiful, beautiful product. Um, I can't say good enough things about it. They, I got these, they sent the couple to me um, for free a while back and I tried it and I am in love with it. They have one that's tinted, but they have one that's also just regular, that's not tinted. Um, if you want something that's more affordable, similar to that, that's tinted, 
This one from CeraVe Hydrating Mineral Sunscreen. And this one is tinted, it says PF30. Um, so this is a good alternative uh, to this one, uh, an affordable option. If you want a sunscreen that gives you glow, one of my favorites is this one from Super Goop Glow Screen. It's beautiful, it uh, kind of gives you, it works as a sunscreen as well as a primer. Um, to prep your skin for foundation. It leaves this beautiful glow and it also has a uh, skin care Skin loving ingredients in it now an uh, affordable option, which is the dupe for that one is this one from elf It does the same thing. This one's SPF 30 it is called untouchables. Whoa, whoa glow this one has more How do I say this? It's way glowier. So you have to be careful and not applying too much because then you can walk around looking like a tin tin man so with this one when i use it i'm super careful i kind of pull back a little bit i apply less i mix it in more because especially if you have like dark skin like mine if the shade is not is a little bit light then it's gonna you're gonna it's gonna look like you have a white cast and then to make it worse like a really glowy white cast and that sounds like a, just a perfect nightmare but one day i actually did walk out like this and my daughter saw me thank god she saw me in the parking spot parking lot and she's like oh my god mom look at yourself so you know it's very different here the mirror in, in indoors right than what the way it looks outside in the sun so Always kind of keep that in mind, but this is a very good affordable alternative option. All right, so that covers sunscreen. And the last one, my last point is, did you know that the number one product sold at Sephora, at least at Sephora, and this is, I think they did some studies. I, I forget where I saw this, but the number one product that is sold is foundation. Foundation, number one product. And I'm not saying Sephora brand foundation. I'm just saying foundations in general. And why is that? Because we want to even out our skin tone. And what is the thing that I mentioned happens when we get old? We start getting the hyperpigmentation, the, the age spots, the, the sun spots, and our skin becomes uneven. And foundation is what we use to make it look even because I also heard this the number one thing that makes people look youthful, I forget where I heard it, um, is having skin that is completely even, that is like flawless. That is like an uh, indicator of youth. Um, and I think that's why we automatically associate, okay, we may not do it in a conscious level, but subconsciously, even skin means youthful. So after I said all that, uh, I feel like people are not very aware that maybe not just covering it up is a good idea maybe treating that hyperpigmentation now i know that people some people can go to the dermatologist and get laser i've heard that there's even something called like plasma and i think that might be for people that have melasma mm -hmm. so like like that's a medical condition that's different but there's like medical it can be medically treated but i'm talking about just things that you can use from home and so I always incorporate um, some type of serum that I use all the time, morning or night, it just depends on which one it is. And the two that I have, the two that I wanna mention to you that I've been using uh, for years on and off, the first one is Faded by Topicals. And this one has pretty much every single ingredient that is known to help hyperpigmentation aside from getting a prescription from the doctor, which in that case, it would be hydroquinone. This doesn't have that because that, like I said, is, is very hydroquinone. You, ha you have to be supervised. You can only use it for like a short amount of time, like for three months. And then, you know, that's why it has to be by prescription, at least in the, in the US. I'm not sure how it is in Europe, but so with the exception of hydroquinone, this has all of the ingredients. Tranexamic acid, the number one most important. Kojic acid. This one has melatonin, niacinamide, licorice root extract, and azelaic acid. So this one has pretty much every single ingredient that studies have shown help hyperpigmentation. The only one that it doesn't have is alpha-arbutin. And you can always get just a simple alpha butin serum from like the ordinary or maybe Inky List has it. So you can kind of 
kind of create your own. See how I mean? Like you can use those brands to help with your already well-rounded skincare regimen. In that case, I can just come in, pour a couple of little drops of alpharbutin, and I have a more complete product. Another good one that I use that has pretty much all of the same ingredients as that one, but this one has AHA and BHA. So it has the chemical exfoliants built in. And this one does have the alpha butin. Because this one has AHAs and BHAs, I would only use this one at night. Whereas this one, I can use in the morning. And that's basically how I use them. I am always using something to address my hyperpigmentation. When you have brown or dark skin, we tend to produce more melanin than the average person. So this is not a problem that's gonna go away. Um, it keeps getting worse, it keeps getting darker. And in the summer months, that multiplies. Like if I'm not using something to keep them in check and to not from getting worse, um, and the sun comes and I'm not using sunscreen, it, it just really, I cannot even tell you. When I didn't really understand about hyperpigmentation and I didn't know about what the ingredients and what products, and I'm talking like maybe six years ago, I, I didn't know any of this. And um, in the summer, I would see how much darker my, this would get. And I didn't even know, I, I didn't even kind of put it together until I started then getting into skincare reading and researching and just really um, started learning about all this stuff and so since then um, I'm always I'm always treating it and the sunscreen is a huge huge part of that because if I don't use sunscreen but I'm investing all my time and money into applying all these products but yet I don't protect my investment then I might as well not use any of this so it goes back again to the sunscreen another point I think that, that I wanted to make and this may be ten and a half I don't know but um, women, some women are afraid of using retinol. A retinol is the number one anti-aging. It's a gold standard anti-aging. And it's funny because it was actually created to treat acne, but then they realized that the side effect was anti-aging benefits. So usually I see people that are, they're like, oh, I'm afraid of using retinol because I'll get sensitive, I'll get redness. Mm -hmm. I know that when you're pregnant and, nur and nursing, you cannot use retinols. There are, however, natural retinol-like uh, products out there. Uh, Bacuccio is one. It's like a plant-based natural retinol. So you can look for uh, products that have Bacuccio. It, they, it, studies have shown that it, it does uh, work according to what I've read, just as, as well as the, the actual retinol. So there are alternatives. You don't, you don't have to be stuck with, oh, retinol, I'm gonna get a bad reaction, or I've tried retinol and I get this, so you stay away from it, and so you're not addressing your, your anti-aging issues. Um, I would approach it with, first of all, looking for um, retinols that are lower in percentage. You know, introduce it slowly, maybe once a week, like, uh, you can always come to Sephora and talk to me. If you happen to be in the New Jersey area, I would talk. I would love to show you. I know. I think Dr. Dennis Gross offers different. There's. They offer different levels of of um, concentration or percentage. So you can always start off with a lower one, with only once a week, and then kind of work your way up. Or you can go um, and use like the natural plant based sort of like the Bacuccio that I mentioned. There's also Resvevitrol is another retinol alternative that's plant-based and that one resveratrol is from um oh my god what is that brand i just drew a blank on that brand um oh dear god i've used the serum it's a beautiful beautiful serum i'm all over the place the resveratrol that i mentioned is from caudalie that same brand so if you're looking uh for retinol, non-retinol alternatives, so look for those things. Um, the the Resveratrol or the Bacuccio. I think um, Paula's Choice has a new product that offers Bacuccio, uh, so those, those are the two ingredients that you want to look for. But if you are serious about implementing a good skincare regimen that is really addressing all of your concerns, right? It's addressing the, the, the hyperpigmentation, the fine lines, the wrinkles, the lack of elasticity, the, la the lack of firmness. Um, you need to incorporate these, all these ingredients that, I, that I've sort of touched on. You know, you need the vitamin C, you need the exfoliation, you need the retinol at night, or uh, a, 
alternative, a natural alternative, like the Bakucho or the Resveratrol. It's kind of being conscious about, okay, what does my skin need? Is it dry? Are these dark spots like, you know, it, it's, it's not a one fix all. I don't even know if that's the right terminology, but it's kind of understanding what your skin needs and then going out and then getting those products and then implementing them all together in a way that helps your skin kind of be supported and, and get everything that it needs. So implementing a good skincare is not me fighting or saying, you know, I'm not getting old or the, or not embracing it. You know, I know we're all going to get old. We're all going to die. This is just self-care. So just the same way you exercise or you eat healthy because you want to help your, your body, you want to feel better. You, this for me, that's how I approach skincare. It's not that I'm saying this is going to be a miracle and you, you use all these ingredients and you're going to look young forever. It's not even close. It just means that you're taking care of your skin and uh, you're helping yourself kind of, you know, maintain that youthful, radiant look as much as possible because implementing all these ingredients, uh, vitamin C, for example, helps the skin not be dull, which is something that happens very, uh, very naturally as we get older. So. It's, it's all these little things, you know, when you put them together and, you know, it doesn't have, doesn't have to break the bank. There's really good drugstore products out there. Um, and if you want me to put together a video uh, kind of discussing those, let me know and I'll be more than happy to do that. But um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope all of this made sense to you. If it did, please let me know by, uh, you know, giving me a thumbs up. It helps me. It helps support the channel. It helps the algorithm push this out to, um, to other people. If you found this useful or helpful, please share it with a friend that also helps support the channel a lot. And you know, you get to you share some of the information that you feel may be helpful to someone else. So I really appreciate you spending some time with me today. I hope that uh, you will subscribe if you're not already. And I hope to see you again very soon on my next video. Take care. Bye. The next, the next point I have is um, goes back to similar, um, I guess, a step um, of, and I couldn't. <laughs> the first one. Um, sorry, my my ring is a little itchy. Okay, and my next point is, sorry, my nose is so itchy.